Welcome to another installment of the GEM video training series, this time on writing a national report. My name is Mike Harrington and I am the Executive Director of GEM, as well as being the team leader for GEM South Africa. Over the last 15 years, I have written all our national reports, as well as several global reports and regional reports. I would like to share with you the reasons for writing your country report, its benefits and how to go about it, especially if you're a new team member to GEM. The main reasons for writing your country report are to consolidate, analyze and make recommendations on the results you have obtained from your Adult Population Survey APS, and your National Expert Survey, NES. And to use this report to disseminate information to stakeholders and, most importantly, to help you in raising funding for future years in GEM. It will also serve as an important source for academic research and education. There is a definite structure to your first report, some parts of which you can write before you have received the final data, which is normally provided in November. This involves the title page, the page for the table of contents, which at this stage would not be completed, the executive summary, which again at this stage can only be completed at the end of the report, acknowledgements, and a section about the authors and your institution. You may also want to include a forward from your sponsor or your institution, but this is your decision. The length of the finished report should be a maximum of 60 pages. The first chapter should be titled The GEM Model and will include information about the project, how GEM measures entrepreneurship and the GEM methodology, which explains what the APS and NES are and what roles they play in the report. It should also contain information coming from other sources, such as the World Bank, the Global Competitive Index Report, local reports and so on. The second chapter is normally used to present the results of the Adult Population Survey, in which you discuss the scale and characteristics of entrepreneurship in your country. There are many ways you can do this, as the APS questionnaire provides so much information that it is not possible to include it all in one report. An example of what could be included in your first country report is an insight into where your country rates in its early stage entrepreneurial activity, or TEA, relative to other participating countries. You should then go on to discuss the entrepreneurial pipeline, which covers information on potential, intentional and early stage entrepreneurs the levels of which are influenced by a number of factors, such as perceived opportunities and capabilities, whether entrepreneurship is considered a good career choice and has a high status attributed to it, and what the media say about it. As an individual moves through the pipeline towards early stage entrepreneurial activity, there are again many factors which may have a direct influence on whether that individual actually starts a business. The next stage is to look at the levels of established business and whether any of the businesses started are opportunity driven, in other words, because they see an opportunity, or necessity driven, because they have no other choice and are in a survival mode. Once the basics have been discussed, 
it is a good idea to start to look at the profile of the entrepreneurs in your country. This includes information of the gender split, the age categories of the entrepreneurs, their levels of education, what sectors they work in, and what the gross potential of their businesses are. If you so wish, you could also extract information on new product development and innovation to name just a few more areas to look at. The choice is yours, as there is no set format. Once you have discussed the results of the APS, you then start on your third chapter, which is a discussion of your country's entrepreneurial environment. This information can come from a number of sources, including your NES, the World Bank data, and the Global Competitive Index report. Here, you will describe the entrepreneurial framework conditions, or EFCs, and the feedback given by the 36 experts interviewed as part of the NES. It is important to integrate your findings with the results from Chapter 2, as the information is interlinked and should not be discussed in isolation. Depending upon how you want to structure your report, it may be an idea for you to discuss your recommendations for policy and practice based upon your findings from the results of Chapters 2 and 3. At this stage of the report, many countries tend to focus in on a special topic, which could be part of the obligatory special topic subject chosen for that particular year, or could be something you have chosen which is both specific and topical for your country. It is only now that you can start to write your report and your executive summary which should be written in such a way that the layperson can understand it and get a good understanding of the entrepreneurial climate in your country. Journalists in particular very rarely read the entire report unless they want to clarify a particular point. Please feel free to contact me or any one of the DATA team if you need any assistance in the interpretation and analysis of your results. Please note that a comprehensive national report template may be downloaded from the GEM website. Thank you in advance for your contribution to GEM. I and the GEM team look forward to working with you on this great and very valuable project.